If Viktor Frankl, in the hellhole of a concentration camp, could choose his attitude, each of us here can choose our attitude. Each of us here has gone through our own personal hell and difficulties from time to time. But if Viktor Frankl, in the hellhole of a concentration camp, could choose his attitude, each of us here can do it. How do we do it? We do it by remembering one powerful question when things go wrong. And the question to ask yourself when things go wrong. The question that will help you to choose your attitude, it's a basic question, the question is, what do I want my attitude to be? What do I want my attitude to be? I'll give you a few examples of where this will work. Just out of curiosity, how many people here in this room have got teenage kids? Okay, oh I see all the furrowed brows, the worried looks, alright? Okay, you're probably wondering what the kid is doing uh, right uh, now. Uh, but let's assume that before you came to this HMMC uh, conference, you asked your teenager, to TiVo to videotape some program on uh, television, right? Um, you come home from this uh, conference uh, full of the joys of life, full of the gift of gab, goals, attitudes, behavior, ready to implement some of the great ideas that you have got here. You walk in and you ask your teenager, uh, well, did you TiVo the program? And you kind of get... <laughs> huh? And you know where the brain should be uh, there's an empty space and kind of two squirrels kind of running around it saying, uh, what were we supposed to do? What were we supposed to do? So your first reaction naturally is to get a little bit miffed, right? Okay, and you've probably reason to get miffed because this is a program that you really did want to see again. It's the 72nd rerun of the third episode of Survivor 2004. <laughs> but you really did want to see it again. So your first reaction is to get miffed. Now your teenager gets miffed. And the reason why your teenager gets miffed is because you're in the relationship business, you're, uh, people business obviously, human beings mirror human beings' reaction. And if you get miffed, obviously the first uh, reaction from your teenager is they're going to get miffed. And when, when we're in the people business, your reaction is going to determine what other people's reaction is. We'll walk through this in a few minutes' time. So, you, now you've come home from this wonderful conference. You're in a funk. The teenager is in a funk. Your spouse now isn't speaking to you. The dog has run away. The cat is hiding underneath the table. And you've got a hamster running around the treadmill at 100 revolutions per second saying to itself, because hamsters are actually very clever. The hamster is saying to itself, why doesn't someone remember to ask themselves the question they should ask? when things go wrong. And the question they should ask when things go wrong is, what do I want my attitude to be? Because if you ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be in that kind of a situation, you're unlikely to say, I want to be angry. I want to be annoyed. You're unlikely to say, I want to be upset. You're much more likely to say, I don't want to be angry. What do I want my attitude to be? I don't want to be upset. I don't want to be annoyed. And you will make some effort not to be angry and not to be annoyed. It is a powerful question that can make a real difference to you. I'll give you another example of where it helped me. A few years back, I was driving in the western suburbs here in Chicago in rush hour traffic. Came to a set of traffic lights, turned left of the traffic lights, and a few seconds after turning left, I noticed in my rear view mirror a mobile discotheque. <laughs> Cop car flashing lights. So I pulled to the slower lane, he pulled to the slower lane. And I remember saying to myself, well, Holy St. Patrick and St. Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of respect there, please. <laughs> Holy St. Patrick and St. Bridget, what could that fine officer of the law want from an upstanding citizen like me? <laughs> now, that was the gist of what I was thinking. Um, I may have said uh, just one four-letter word. Um, but for those of you whose mind is in the gutter, the word was oops. <laughs> which, as you all know, stands for, uh-oh, police, stop. <laughs> right. So I pulled into a little small parking lot on the side of the road, and as I was pulling in, I said to myself, now why does he want to speak to me? And the only reason I could figure why he might want to speak to me was when I had turned left of the traffic lights. There were 
slightly red. <laughs> but not by a whole lot now, mind you. <laughs> so, he is there on his computer checking me to see if in my case I'm a member of the Irish Republican Army, <clears throat> or even worse, a Cubs fan. <laughs> uh, go White Sox! <laughs> hey. I, I have to tell you, depending on who I'm speaking to, I obviously try and put in a kind of an answer to that that gets a, a reaction. But when I was speaking up in the, near the Green Bay area a couple of years ago, I made the comment that the cop was checking to see if I was a member of the Irish Republican Army, or worse, a Packers fan. I didn't think I would get out of that room alive. <laughs> so he was there checking my computer to see what I, um, my record was like. And I asked myself the question that I said you should ask when things go wrong. So I asked myself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? And I said there's no point in being antsy and annoyed about this. He probably doesn't understand the concept of slightly red lights. <laughs> so in my side mirror, I see him walking up towards me. And this being Chicago land area, I prayed that he had an Irish name. <laughs> I prayed that he had this vision of Ireland that the roads are still unpaved. <laughs> that milk is brought to the creamery via donkey and cart. <laughs> and that traffic lights, if they exist at all, are, well, basically advisory. <laughs> I look up. Officer Schmidt. <laughs> who proceeded to tell me in minute detail what I had done wrong. He asked for my license and he asked for my insurance. Now, none of this is made up, I promise you. I had asked myself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? As he is looking at my license, he says to me, Sir, I like your attitude. I'm thinking, woohoo, I'm getting away with this. <laughs> then he looks at my insurance and he says, Sir, your insurance certificate is out of date. Uh, my wife normally looks after that officer. <laughs> he smiled. I think he realized he was dealing with one more administratively incompetent husband. <laughs> Ladies, you know the story, I'm sure. And he just handed back the insurance certificate to me and he said, look, um, uh, take it easy on that one. Now, I should tell you that this event happened on the 16th of March. Okay, one day before St. Patrick's Day. So the rest of the conversation went as follows. We're having great good fun, and as you will see, it continued that way. So the rest of the conversation went, uh, how much will this cost me, officer? He said, I'll cite you for the uh, red light. I'll leave you go on the insurance. That'll cost you $75, sir. $75? Do you know how many pints of Guinness I can get tomorrow for $75? <laughs> the guy cracked up laughing. I think he thought I was on crystal meth. <laughs> and he said to me, sir, if I was to cite you for the red light and the lack of insurance, this, this would be significantly more expensive. You'd have to go to a traffic court. So I said, uh, thank you. I appreciate the, the break you're giving me. I pull into a very small parking lot with only one access and egress. So I had to turn the car around and drive by Officer Schmidt. As I drove by Officer Schmidt, I kid you not, he waved to me with a genuine smile. That was how the conversation had gone. And I said, this is crazy. This guy's waving to me with a genuine smile, and he's after fining me 75 bucks. <laughs> and I waved back to him with a genuine smile, saying, this is really crazy. <laughs> he's fined me 75 bucks, and I'm waving back to him. What Officer Schmidt, though, would not have known was that for only $75, I got a really powerful anecdote about the importance of asking yourself a really powerful question when things go wrong. And for everyone here in this room, things do go wrong. In the next couple of days, something will go wrong. Hopefully, that's not going to be anything serious. Maybe you might spill a cup of coffee here on the table, or you might stub your toe or something like that. But things will go wrong. It's life. We all hit speed bumps. We all hit potholes. When we hit those speed bumps, when we hit those potholes, if you can remember to ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? It will make a real difference to you. And it won't make just a real difference to you here at the hotel in Chicago. It will make a real difference to you when you're dealing with your customers, with your clients, and with your work colleagues when you go back to work. So, knowing the people here in this room, I know that everyone here in this room does not have any difficult colleagues to work with. Right? 
I know that everyone here in this room doesn't have any difficult clients or customers to work with. But let's assume you did have a difficult colleague to work with. Let's assume that you know that when you're going into a meeting next week with this uh, difficult colleague, you're kind of saying to yourself, I just cannot work with that person, or that person drives me crazy, or they're just so uh, unappreciative of the work and the results that we are generating. One way that will help you to change the environment in that meeting room, or at that meeting, is that before you go to the meeting, Ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be when I'm inside there? And I think when you ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be when you're going in dealing with your uh, difficult work colleague, or you're going in dealing with a customer that you really have difficulties with, when you ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be, you're not going to say, I want to be cranky, I want to be upset, I want to annoy them. I think if you ask yourself the question, what do I want my attitude to be, you're probably going to say, I need to get something out of this meeting. I need this meeting to be productive. And when you ask that question, what do I want my attitude to be, I think it will shape the format and your thinking for that meeting. And if you go into that meeting with that kind of a different attitude, you may well come out with a totally different result, a more positive result. It is a powerful question that can make a real difference to you. <laughs>